Hey, everybody. Welcome back to our podcast where we agree to disagree on a lot of different things. Today, we'll be talking about honeymoons. I'm really excited for this topic because <laughs> we had a really awesome honeymoon and I'm so excited to talk things all honeymoon today. We did. I, I thought it was a lot of fun. I think it's kind of sad because I feel like it's less of a thing now. Maybe it's just just my personal bias, just from people I know. But I feel like I know a lot of, like I have a lot of friends that get married and they don't do a honeymoon or they say, oh, we'll do it later. Mm-hmm. Which, you know, obviously not everyone can, but it was lots of fun. I think it's a, it's a fun way to celebrate getting married. I mean, for us, you know, one of the main reasons we went on our, like used Thailand, we went to Thailand. We used Thailand for our honeymoon because Jonas was working for Vivint at the time and you basically won the trip to Vivint, right? I won or, a trip to Thailand. Or, oh my gosh, what did I say? A trip to Vivint? Sorry, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but he won like a trip to Thailand. It was like the trip of the year. And so we like we were like talking about getting married. And then we're like, oh my gosh, let's just get married right before Thailand. And then we can use that as our honeymoon. So we didn't have to really spend money on our honeymoon. We got to save a lot of money, which was super nice. Mm-hmm. And we got to do lots of cool stuff. Um, and, you know, we were really lucky too because... We got married in 2019, November 2019, which was like right before COVID. So we got to like enjoy the honeymoon right before all the craziness. So I'm sure that probably had a huge side effect of why people couldn't go on honeymoons either, you know. And, you know, honeymoons are expensive, especially when you have to pay for a whole wedding. But anyway, yes, Jonas and I did go on a honeymoon and we enjoyed it. it yeah, really so we fun. went to Thailand. We were there for, like I want to say a week, maybe a little more than a week. And it was actually... We did it in two parts. So the the first part was kind of like a service project sort of thing, which was actually really cool because we stayed in like this little hut. Well, first, first we land and it's like super humid. I, you know, I've never uh-huh. been to Thailand. You know, I'm just thinking like, oh, Thailand, like doing all the sightseeing and going, doing all the cool stuff and like experiencing the culture. And then the plane we really, ride was kind of rough though because it was... We were in the plane for like what eighteen hours. Yeah, and I feel like we had a really maybe, long maybe it layover. wasn't that bad, but I I just remember we spent like two days of our life in the plane yeah. on the layover. Anyway. Anyways, we got there. We were kind of tired. Yeah, but then we get on this like <laughs> no offense, get a little bus thing, <laughs> and oh, cool. yeah. and I didn't know like what the service project was gonna be like. Like this was like a whole new experience for me, and I was super excited. But anyway, we like get in this like little bus and the it's super hot and they have like little fans in it and the windows were down and we're all just like bus riding over and basically everyone that was there was it all Vivint crew or was it random yeah. people too it was all mm-hmm. Vivint crew Vivint, going yeah. right so yeah we get in we go to these like little this little area these little huts and it it was just I was like I don't know how I'm gonna survive the next couple of days yeah so I mean, if you haven't already figured out, Michaela's really high maintenance, and I'm pretty low maintenance. So we show up, and I'm like, "Oh, this is cool. It's like camping, you know." Okay, and, well, and Michaela's crying. Well, yeah, because there's like, uh, you know, training <laughs> at the ranch is there's like bugs everywhere. And training and, like cha- training at the ranch. Okay, I've been to other countries in like situations like where we've stayed haven't always been maybe the greatest, but they're still pretty like decent, you know. But it was literally like third world country like living. Like it was. It was insane, but also like a really humbling experience. And I'm really glad we did it. And it was really nice because we were supposed to share a room with um, some other people from Vivint. And Jonas's boss, Steve, was really nice since we just got married. Let us have his own room. So we had like our own little room with our own little bed. Yeah, because the second part of the trip was the actual resort. So that was like the actual vacation, yeah. like the actual honeymoon. So we had our own room there. But yeah, when we, when we showed up, it was because there was a whole bunch of people doing the service project and we we were all just kind of bunking in the huts. Yeah. But luckily we got our own little hut. Yeah. But listen to this. So the shower was in the bathroom and the bathroom was like teeny tiny, like super tiny. So when you showered, the water was like all over the toilet, all over the walls. All over the sink. There was like no shower curtain. The way to warm your water was this tiny little like electric little vent thing that you turned on. You just see fire like shooting out (laughs) of it. And then it, I don't know. There's times where I thought like something was going on. <laughs> yes. I like, I'm like, I, I don't know. I, it was anyway, then there's ants all over in the bathroom. And then we had some like snails and like weird things on our floor. <laughs> and the bed was like as hard as a rock. Yeah. That was nuts. The mattress was, 
It was hard. It was hard. I don't know hard. what it was made out of, but it was. Yeah, so I definitely, it was definitely hard for sure, but it I th- was really I th- cool. I thought it was cool. It was an awesome experience. It was cool. It was really humbling. Yeah. And then for the service. Oh, yeah, this part was awesome. That part was really cool because we did, we did a few different things. We built like a pig pen, right? Like an mm-hmm. enclosure. And then we'd like made wheat. Right? Is that what you're doing? Oh, rice. And we took, like... Yeah, we went to the rice fields, and we actually, like, saw how they take rice from the fields, and you have to, like, hit hit them on, like, these wooden pallets, then the rice would fall, and they would collect it on tarps. And it was, like, it was, like, 100 degrees and super humid. And then we got to go to this, like, other little place. We, like, took a trip over there, and we got to paint their... Oh, Kinda that's like right. Temples. Yeah, there was like a like a Buddhist temple sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, and we got to like paint it. Yeah, it they was were so cool. They were repainting it, and so we got to you know climb the scaffold. And, and then do it was that. fun because we were surrounded by like all the people there, and it was so fun because you guys remember you guys were playing with that stick. You guys oh, yeah. were playing that game, and then the people there were like doing it with you guys, and yeah, all the cute little kids just going. It was so cool. It was really cool. So. That was fun. But then we finally So, yeah. So, that was the first, I think that was like three days that we did the service. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was really cool because, so every day we'd wake up, they would make breakfast for us. And (laughs) this actually- The food was not very good. I liked it. We had a lot of Thai food. I liked it. I just got kind of tired of it because it was pretty much pad Thai for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So, at first, you're like, oh, this is awesome. The very last night- Oh, didn't they have some weird fish stuff that looked like chicken? And I was so excited and I bit into it and I was like, oh, and we were all like, what is this? But then they actually had French fries. And so literally the French fries would be gone in two seconds and then they'd bring out more two seconds gone. Like everyone was just only eating the French fries, but, but so, so yeah, so we ate a lot of Thai food and then they would, we would just bus out to the different locations where we were doing service. So whether it was. I think it was we we did one project each day. So mm-hmm. the first day was like we were building that pig pen enclosure mm-hmm. for like that piece of the farm. And then the second day we were the rice. doing the rice. And then the third day we were painting the temple. Um, and it was really cool. I loved it. Like mm-hmm. I, you know, I want to, I feel like that's the way to vacation, you know, because we were like in the culture. We were with people like working with them mm-hmm. and, you know, we were living in suboptimal conditions and then also it made the second part of our honeymoon even better because the next like four or five days we were in a resort. Um, it was like right on the beach. Yeah, super nice. Yeah, just a really cool spot. And so then from there we did a whole bunch of day trips. We went to Monkey Island. And yeah, we got so we to went to the, monkeys. the PP Islands if anyone's ever oh, been yeah. to Thailand. Um, that was super cool because we took a boat. We were staying in Phuket. We took a, a boat – well, first we drove somewhere, then we took a boat to the islands, and then from there we paid a local fisherman to take us to Monkey Island, and then we got these super cool pictures of monkeys, like, climbing on us. That was cool. Because they're, like, pretty much domesticated at this point because so many tourists go there. Um, what else did we do? The, the, the street, the food carts were super good. They'd make these, like, Nutella crepes. Oh, those were good. Yeah, and there's, like, this also – this random little like petting zoo down the street from the hotel. Do you remember that? Oh yeah, the elephant. With the elephant. The little baby elephant. Yeah, there's this, so cute. this cute little baby elephant. Didn't I feed it some like little peanuts or something? Yeah, I, th- I think you were feeding it bananas. Oh. oh, yeah. I need to go back and look at those. I'll have to post them on Instagram so people can There was this. See. There was this other spot where you could like pet a tiger, but people had told us that they like drug the tigers or something, and yeah. so we just didn't want to. We didn't want to support that. So yeah. Just so we didn't do that. We didn't ride any elephants either for I think similar reasons. Um, we went jet skiing. That was fun. That was, <laughs> I distinctly remember you were still training. And so you're like, you're going to kill me. Like, out. Yeah. I can't get injured. <laughs> you were going so fast. It was scary. But we spent most of our time just hanging out at the resort. Yeah. I feel like just. Mm-hmm. Kind of chilling, going to the beach. Yeah. Going to the beach, there's a big pool. You were trying to catch some crabs. There's lots of crabs, lots, <laughs> really of, lots of frogs. Yeah. Oh, the it food was, was so good. fun. Yeah, so so that was our honeymoon. Um, super cool trip, lots of fun. I liked how we could do the service project first and then enjoy it. Really liked how it was pretty much free because I won the trip. That was nice. Yeah. That was worth it. 
honestly, though, like, it's, like, it's hard because you get, you know, hopefully you only get married once in your life, but I know, like, you know, weddings need to be a big deal, and it needs to be great, but, like, there's definitely things that I feel like you can still make really nice without having to spend, like, an overload ton of money. Like, one, I think it's just a waste of money, like, to spend that much on your wedding because, it goes by so fast. And I remember like, even at my like wedding, like we got married in the temple. So we didn't have, we didn't have like a ceremony or anything. We thought about it, but most of my family that weren't members of the church didn't come. Um, and we had a huge reception anyways, which was yeah, pretty we had much a huge reception and we had one in Utah. So like so those were really, the wedding ceremony. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it was just really fun. And, um, anyway, that, it was nice cause we didn't have to like spend a ton of money on that and everything looked, it was so good. But I just remember like, with so many things going on, we left for Thailand the next day after our wedding. Oh, yeah, that and was... So during our break, like, Jonas and I didn't even, like, no, so spend time together because I was sitting there trying to pack everything because we got married so fast, and I came back from Worlds, went to Utah, got proposed, came home, got ready for the wedding, and, like... Well, because it was the day of our wedding, so we were staying at a hotel in Phoenix, mm-hmm. and did we leave straight from there, or did we come back first? I can't even remember. No, I think we went straight there. I I just remember it I was don't know. it was someone had told me I can't remember who it was, but someone had said like, "Hey, best piece of wedding advice I can give you is wait a few days to leave on your honeymoon." And I'm like, "Oh, that sounds like a good idea." And then it just didn't really work out, you know, because we were so pressed for time and you couldn't take that much time off training anyways. But it was literally it was we had our wedding and that was like a whole day event sort of thing and and I honestly, reception like, that night. don't remember that much. Like, it, I feel like that we, day went by pretty Obviously, fast, you want stuff to be nice for everybody, and it and it should be the way you want it. But I'm just trying to say real quick that, like, mm-hmm. you don't need to spend so much time on that and, like, overdoing it to where you, like, are just spending so much money. Because, like, yeah, people remember, but they, like, don't. You know, you get a wedding invitation, you go to the wedding, you throw it away. So it's just, like, things like that, like... I don't know. It's, I feel like it's better to kind of save your money and then like go on a honeymoon and like enjoy that experience together and have that like intimate moment. Anyway, continue. Yeah. Well, I just remember our reception went late and it was cool because it it was a cool reception. Like, and we did it in someone's backyard, Mm -hmm. which was nice to save money and it was a great spot. But there was, I just remember there was such a long line of people that we met, we took pictures with and then, which was great. You know, I love seeing people. And then there was, there was dancing and then we cut the cake and then there were some other things. I just remember that was such a long night. And then we go straight from there to your parents' house. So you could like put your wedding dress away and stuff and pack up. And we go from there to the hotel where we stayed our night there. And then I think pretty sure we went straight from the hotel to the airport Mm -hmm. to Thailand. And so it was like nonstop. And then it was a, like a 13 hour flight and then like a six hour layover and another six hour flight. Because our layover was in Taiwan, I think. Does that sound right? I honestly don't remember. I, I I will never forget that airport because I feel like we lived there. Yeah, we were there for a long time. We were just sitting there watching movies <laughs> on the laptop. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, so timing wasn't the best, and we were so tired. I remember that was the nice thing, though, is when we get to Thailand, we were jet lagged, obviously, but we were already so tired anyways that it didn't even matter. We, I remember we went to bed at like six o'clock every night Mm -hmm. on our honeymoon. We woke up at like 6 a.m. Yeah. That was probably the best sleep schedule I've ever had my whole life because we got like 12 hours of sleep every (laughs) night. It was nice getting up in the morning and walking around the little village and like all the cool things they had. It was nice because like I'm not, I'm not a morning person at all. Like it's, it's all I can do to get up at seven every morning as it is. We also got to do the little lanterns. Remember? Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. That was cute. That was, that was the first part during the service. We did a, one of those little, you know, you light, you light a lantern. It's like a little light festival thing. Those are big in Thailand. I found out. Mm-hmm. Um, anyways, so would you have changed anything about our honeymoon besides waiting a day or two to leave? I mean, I kind of wish, like, with us going all the way out there, we would have done a little bit more or had a little more time. I would agree. I feel like it kind of went by fast. Because then we also, it was like, only it was only a week. But you also had, like, and Vivint traveled. stuff. Like, remember Vivint did, like, a whole dinner ceremony that we had to be That's to. That's true. And there's, like, another thing we had to be to or be a part of, you know. So it just. So, yeah, I mean, ideally, ideally, we wouldn't have 
I mean, we would have had a, like our own honeymoon. I mean, it no regrets there. Like it was nice for us being the newlyweds and me. That was my first year working like a real job. It was nice to have a free trip for a honeymoon. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there was. It, it was a little different. I think I thought it was fun though because I had some friends there, and I thought it was fun because we hung out with them. Yeah, you know, like hung out with Dylan and Koa. Steve and Jordan were there. Right. I kind of wish we would have gone with Steve's group a little bit more because it seems like they went and did some cool things that we didn't really know of. Yeah. Jonas and I, I feel like, are really bad with trips. We're terrible. We we're terrible. We don't trip know planners. the things or how to do. I don't know. We just terrible. don't really try. We're just kind of well, like, oh, let's go on a trip and do stuff. Well, and the then we get there like, and we're like, what are we doing? <laughs> I'm totally fine. Like, we went to Hawaii. Like, I could, if, if we're going somewhere with a beach and just cool stuff like i'm totally fine being at the beach all day and just kind of well, wandering I am around too, but when it's like my first time in hawaii i want to go like experience things too because yeah I've so i mean so it. we did a few day trips we could have done more but then everything was booked out that was also a problem because they like since covid it was like you have to have reservations months in advance so we get there and literally we can't do anything because everything's booked out so that was kind of sad I, I would definitely say if we do it again to spend more time because Travel, like going back and forth, that like traveling took up so much time because the flight was so long and there was a layover, layover both ways. I think if you're going to go to Thailand or somewhere that far away, you should spend at least two weeks. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, more day trips. Although I, I had a lot of fun just hanging out at the resort. That was fun. It was nice. But, I mean, that's the only thing I would have changed. What would you say is the best and worst parts of the trip? Well, obviously, staying in that little thing, that little hut. I thought that was cool. I don't but. know. The bed was so hard, and the shower was, I don't know, and the bugs. I'm like, I don't like showering <laughs> with ants. I would say worst part is the travel, just getting there. Best part. My favorite part was Monkey Island, I think. I would, you know, that that actually was really cool. I really enjoyed that. That was cool. And then, like, you would go back into, like, the cave part of it. And it was, like, so cool in there. It looked like, like, Avatar, you know? Yeah. It was, like... I think it was just cool. Just It was, like, a different world, you know, because that's the farthest I've ever gone to travel. And the water so pretty. The water was pretty. Yeah, the scenery was beautiful. It was a cool place. I also have to say I kind of hated the food. It was nice when we kind of went to some areas that had more American food-ish. I, I like Thai food, oh, but, yeah, no. Michaela doesn't really like Thai no. food, so that was a little rough. But you I'm know what so else was cool? I, I just, because that was my first time really vacationing internationally. I thought it was cool using the Thai, the money, the bot. Mm-hmm. And stuff was pretty cheap there. Like we got all those, we got like a fake Louis Vuitton purse for like $10 on that one beach mm-hmm. with all those vendors and stuff. Yeah. And we got, like I got those, like a swimsuit for like five bucks. Oh yeah. Do you still wear those or do you not wear I have it. Anymore? I don't wear it a whole oh. lot, but. So, yeah, that was cool. I liked. But, yeah, if we're just doing a one-week trip, I mean, you can get a similar experience going to Hawaii. It's similar. Like, I don't want to offend anyone. It's definitely different. But as far as, like, tropical vibes, Mm -hmm. you can go to Hawaii, and it's a cheaper flight, and it's a quicker flight. But I'd love to go back to Thailand. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Although you might not want to. No, I'd go back. Yeah. Yeah, well, we, well, I liked it. It's just, then. remember, we just hated the travel so much. We're like, that was a drag, you know? So it was like, uh-huh. especially with Jonas being so tall, he's just super uncomfortable in the yeah, seats. I don't and fit it's well just on not planes and stuff. Him. And, oh, the buses, too. Anytime we bust somewhere, that was the worst because their buses were small and I just don't really fit in a normal bus as it is. Yeah. But it was awesome. I would love to go back. I thought it was a great great honeymoon destination yeah i had fun we got some good good pictures yeah it was cute it was cool this podcast is brought to you by oath care a new model of health care rooted in community to improve the health of all families oath care provides complete support for mothers experiencing the fertility pregnancy and pediatric journey oath gives you direct access to maternal and child health specialists paired with a support system of fellow mothers Oath matches you with your own care team, a stage-based specialist, mental health therapist, and trained parent guide to answer any and all questions seven days a week, all within one chat. Oath has ancillary care specialists such as sleep and lactation consultants, pelvic floor therapists, and specialists in nutrition, exercise, speech, and early childhood development. 
that are tagged into your chat to specifically answer your questions, and they host weekly calls so that you can receive medical expertise that is paired with wisdom from the other Oath members on the call. Additionally, they have four stage-based communities as the initial way for moms to connect in the Oath app outside of their intimate Oath Care team chat. Join Oath Care for a stress-free community to connect with fellow parents moderated by the experts of credible support and solutions. We provide judgment-free support and personalized guidance for motherhood. Expert-moderated communities provide built-in and humanized fact-checking to ensure parents in receiving the most up-to-date evidence-based advice. The community feature is free and always will be. And they have four stage-based communities where parents can ask questions and support each other through pregnancy, postpartum, infant, toddler, and young child. The support grows with you. You can find your own virtual village, and it's moderated by experts. So one, personalized guidance. Oath matches you with your own care team, a stage-based specialist, mental health therapist, and trained parent guide to answer any and all questions seven days a week, all within one chat, which is incredible. Oath has ancillary care specialists such as sleep and lactation consultants, pelvic floor therapists, and specialists in nutrition, exercise, speech, and early childhood development that are tagged into your chat to specifically answer your questions and they host weekly calls so that you can receive medical expertise that is paired with wisdom from the other Oath members on the call. For more information, you can check out the website OathCare.com or download the OathCare app directly from the Apple App Store or Google Play at the link in our bio. Um, Let's look at some research. So 1.4 million U.S. couples per year go on a honeymoon And 99% of couples who take the honeymoon had a traditional wedding. That's interesting. I guess that makes sense. I mean, I think that's just like normal though. Like that's part of getting married is you do a wedding and you go on a honeymoon, you know. The most popular U.S. honeymoon destinations are Hawaii, Florida, California, Nevada, probably Las Vegas, I would assume. And overseas destinations are Mexico, Jamaica, the Bahamas, Italy, St. Lucia, and France. The most popular would be fun. That would be fun. The most popular honeymoon destination of all is Hawaii. That makes sense. Hawaii is such a cool place. I've been there like five times, I think. I've been there once. (laughs) But you loved it, right? We're coming up on a year, Mark, from our trip. We should go to Hawaii every year. You wanna go this year? Chelsea and them are going. When? I don't know, soon, like spring break or something. That'd be fun. Um, According to Expedia, after COVID-19 impacted 97% of honeymoon plans in 2020 to 2021, with couples postponing or canceling their trips, couples in 2022 wanted an even bigger and better honeymoon than they were originally planning for and were more likely to travel to bucket list destinations. That's That's interesting. Yeah, that's really interesting. I mean, it makes sense, though, because if you have to postpone your wedding and or honeymoon a year or two years at that point you're like well i've been waiting so long might as well you know go all out right save money in a study done in 2022 45 percent of the couples surveyed were planning to honeymoon at an all-inclusive resort so that's a good deal ours wasn't an all-inclusive resort really yeah all-inclusive it's kind of like a cruise like you just pay to stay there and like food and stuff Mm. Um, the food. Remember, we had the breakfast though. They had that whole breakfast buffet at the hotel. Yeah, but so good. That wasn't included. Though, I know, and that but was I'm expensive. just saying that was good. <laughs> yeah, so I it think was like right by the beach, you could. Just I don't even know if I've ever done an all-inclusive resort. Now that I think about I don't it, I think I have either, and I've never been on a cruise either. Wow. Well, we should. All-inclusive resorts are nice, just because there's just one less thing to worry about as far as stress, like financial stress goes, is spending money. Because if it's all-inclusive, you know, you just you just got the one. <laughs> And then if you do day trips and stuff. According to wedding industry statistics in 2022, U.S. couples spend an average of around $4,800 on their honeymoon. That cost might skyrocket for couples planning a destination wedding, which can be closer to $5,000 to $7,500. I would never do a destination. Well, I shouldn't say never. I don't think I would. I don't think it's a great idea to do destination wedding because I feel bad for, like, people that are going to your wedding. Mm -hmm. You know? I know. It's a lot of money. But it would be cool. Definitely would be cool. But I feel like at that point, you just make that destination your honeymoon after. Yeah. I'm, so it all kind of works out, I feel like. That's true. I'm trying to think how much our trip would have cost if it wasn't free. I don't know. Probably around there. 
Um, yeah, honeymoons aren't cheap, but. Well, how much did we spend, like, without, I mean, just with food and. Yeah, so we spent, we spent, it was, like, between one and two thousand dollars just on, like, food and trips and stuff, like, day trips and whatnot. So, actually, that was pretty, it was, like, fifteen hundred bucks, I think, that we spent. Well, yeah, but then imagine paying for the hotel. Yeah, hotel and and flights. flights. So, it probably would have been even more. Yeah. Crazy. Expensive. Do you think a honeymoon is a necessary part of the wedding experience? Yeah. Yeah. I would say so. I think, and even if you can't, like, if you can't travel, you don't have the means to travel, at least, like, some sort of staycation honeymoon. You know, like, I've had a bunch of friends that get married and they go to Park City and just stay a few days at one of the nice hotels there. Yeah, but we did Park City... For, for our anniversary. anniversary, and I liked it, but I was like, I would not like this for a honeymoon. Unless you're going to go ski or something. Yeah, I mean, unless you ski or, because there, there's not a whole there's not lot, a lot to, to do. do like, the outlets of. are really bad in Park City, and there's not really shopping. Yeah, the shopping's which not great. Which, obviously, you don't have to there's shop There's great places to eat. I don't know, it's kind of boring. If you just want to sit in your hotel <laughs> all day and cuddle in the snow. Well, I mean, if you go... The other times a year, there's more. You can go hiking and go do more, like, sightseeing stuff. But in the winter, it's just cold. You're like, what is there to do if you don't go skiing? So Yeah. Well, here's a question. And we should have asked ourselves this before our honeymoon. But who should plan the honeymoon? The guy, the girl, or someone else? Like a travel expert? (laughs) I don't know. I never thought about it because we didn't have to do that. Yeah, I mean... I think like both, you should both be in on it and, you know. Yeah, I think what we... Or have someone help. We probably should have sat down together, maybe included either a travel expert or someone who's been there before and just made a list of like things we should do. Start booking stuff in advance because once we got there and most of the day trips we wanted to do were booked out, that's when we were like, oh, we should have mm-hmm. <laughs> should have planned this earlier. Um, have any of your friends taken crazy expensive honeymoons? Not that I know of. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I don't know. Again, a lot of my friends have gone to Park City. Well, I feel like a lot of them haven't even gone on honeymoons, really, because they were in school or yeah. work. Yeah, so and like a lot of my friends haven't even gotten married at all. Yeah. Um, what's the most important thing, would you say, on a honeymoon? Is it relaxing? Is it adventures? Is it quality time? We'll probably disagree on this one. <laughs> I don't know. I wanted to adventure more, but. <laughs> yeah, I would say probably like quality time and relaxing. Yeah. I, I mean, I liked getting into bed at night in our nice, like, because we had like a nice sweet room. And that was like fun to just snuggle in bed. And it was nice. I don't know. I like, because I love quality time. But I feel like when you're going to spend the time and the money to like go somewhere like that, I want to do stuff. I don't want to just sit yeah. in the room. It was, it was also hard, though, because I had just finished a long summer of work and then we had our whole plan the wedding and get married and everything and so i was just really wanted to just relax um but so yeah i would say most important thing would be quality time just relaxing do you think people put too high of expectations on the honeymoon and how can you manage those expectations before the trip because <laughs> for us it was just like go 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 we didn't really so it's like we didn't really have a whole lot of time to think about it or have any expectations because the whole thing leading because it it wasn't even just that it was like trying to plan to propose we were in different states and then you were going to germany and like yeah so we always just had in the back of our mind because that was a funny we planned our honeymoon before we planned our wedding because i won the trip like middle of the summer and i forget what i had to do but i was i did really really well and so i was super excited and i'm like hey you know i won this trip like, Michaela, you should go with me. Town would be cool. And then it was when I went to see you in Arizona, probably, like, just a few weeks later, we started talking about, hey, maybe we should get married. And then we look at our calendars, and that's when I realized, I'm like, oh, I'm going to Thailand in November. You should just come with and, me on as a honeymoon. Right. And so it was always just kind of in the back of our well, minds. Well, like, it's hard, too, because, like, with being LDS, you know, we don't 
sleep together you know before marriage so it was like well we don't want to go on this trip and yeah like, I'm, that was part of it too <laughs> sleep in bed to get you know so it's just like well i guess this all just works out yeah. <laughs> i don't know so yeah we d- i don't think we mm. really had too high expectations we were just happy to travel somewhere you know and happy to be married yeah i think it was just fun i don't know i think a lot of times we put so much stress on ourselves, and i did have stress but not that much stress because my whole family was doing everything i was at worlds competing and training every day and so I was just sending screenshots to my sister and my mom and I'm like okay I kind of like this I like this I like this just do it I don't even care at this point like I just want to be married (laughs) and it and it all turned out really good like even your mom had a really cute reception dinner or not reception dinner like a what do you call it reception no it was just like a dinner before dinner yeah like yeah I I don't know whatever you call that but family dinner yeah, the dinner before the wedding, and that was all cute and outside in front of this really gorgeous house, and they, it was all lit up, and that was really fun, and that was when you made that video of us. Remember, we sat down. Mm-hmm. Jonas wanted to do this video for our wedding, or for the dinner, where we both sat down and kind of talked about each other, and it was really well, no, so funny. I had one of my friends ask us, We act, honestly, we should, I'll see if I can find it, or we should redo it for the youtube or the podcast because it was hilarious because well because so back then talked about this before i already knew it's funny you know our podcast is agree to disagree i already you know we knew pretty early on that we agreed to disagree on a lot of stuff and so when we were getting married i thought it'd be hilarious so i had my friend dio i gave him a list of questions that i knew that we would disagree on and a lot of it was simple stuff like how did you guys meet because i knew we'd have different versions of the story and so he sat us down at different times and asked us those questions, and then I put it together in a video. So I put our answers next to each other, and it was it was really funny because we had like very different answers on a lot of very simple questions. Um, but yeah, that was cool. How'd you handle the exhaustion after the honeymoon coming back? I mean, it was kind of like I competed. I had to like come back and start training again and I yeah you didn't really have a choice yeah but I was like you know with gymnastics you have like a day off it feels like a week and I had had like two weeks off because I got a break from because the wedding so we had worlds and then Lisa's like okay well you're getting married so I took a break after worlds and then we got married and went to Thailand so like you know I had like two and a half weeks off and so coming back from that was a little rough I tried going into the gym a couple times in between but then it just got really crazy with everything And so that was kind of hard, like getting back into shape, but then I had to get ready for Pan Ams in Canada and then we went to Pan Ams. So like my mind was just like, it was like right back to reality, you know, it was like, here we go. But it was like, you know, it was hard too, because that adjustment of being married and transitioning into that and like, no one really talks about like how hard marriage is. Like, I think we all just think like, oh, we want to get married one day, especially when you're a girl, that's like you know, on your priority list, like, I want to be married, I want to have my wedding, you know, this whole shebang, but then it's, like, no one talks about how hard being married is and adjusting, and I guess, like, a lot of people, we've talked about this before, get to kind of live with their fiance or their boyfriends before they get married, so they kind of already have that, but it still is just different, you know, you guys are stuck with each other 24-7, especially during Mm -hmm. COVID, and, like, it was hard, like, Jonas and I, there was things that we, like, didn't really know about each other and we dated for two years you know so anyway it was a great time but a hard time but I'm grateful for it and for our learning experiences and our ups and downs but it was it was a ride for sure during that time and then we went to Canada I competed I did really well and I was like okay we got to get ready for the Olympics and then like literally a week after that they're like okay Olympics isn't happening and then they're like okay Olympics is postponed so it was just like I don't know. It was fun while it lasted, while it was good before things got mm-hmm. crazy. But are there any places that you want to travel to that we haven't? We've talked a little bit about this. Yeah, we I both really want, want to go, go to Africa. Africa, and I want to go to Australia. And Australia, or like New Zealand. I, want, I think Paris would be cool because I want to go to the Eiffel. No, what is it called? The Eiffel Tower. Is it the Eiffel yeah. Tower? Oh my gosh, my brain's not working. I was right. Um. I've always wanted to go to the Bahamas Baha- yeah, and Puerto Rico, especially because those are good places to live if you're trying to save on taxes. It's true. 
Um, last thing, what message would you say to anyone on a strict budget who may not be able to take their dream vacation for their honeymoon? I would just say, like, kind of like we talked about, I mean, just do your own thing. Like, even if you maybe don't go on a honeymoon right away, like, that's okay. Just go somewhere, celebrate a little bit, have a good time. And then, you know, one day save up for that trip. And I feel like it will just mean as much as it did if you would have gone right after your wedding. I mean, I think hearing all of our friends that go on honeymoons later, it was still like so fun. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. I think they didn't regret not going on a honeymoon right away. You know, like they got to go experience it later on in life where they've matured, their marriage has grown and to like go off and like have your honeymoon later, I think is really cool. But for me, obviously... I liked having it right after the wedding just because, you know, we never got to, like, live together. So it was just, like, our first time, like, being together on a vacation out on our own. Like, I don't know. So that was really fun. But honestly, you know, you just got to do whatever makes you happy. And if you can't do a honeymoon, who cares, you know? Do what's best for you and just enjoy the moment. Enjoy the wedding. I mean, kind of like Jonas said, we were so rushed And then had to go to the airport and stuff. So I feel like we didn't even get to enjoy the wedding part Mm -hmm. of it because we were just so stressed with everything going on. So really just take your time. Enjoy the moment. Weddings go by so fast. So just really like when you're there, just like enjoy it and take it all in because it's just like the day goes by. You spend all this time prepping and then it's just like over. I I agree. That's good advice. I mean, it's hard. If you don't have money, that's okay. You know, you'll find something else to do, but. You want to send us off with the assumption? I don't know. I feel like I always do it. You want to do do it it. this time? Today's assumption is Michaela is the boss of the house and Jonas goes along with it. I mean, I want to say yeah. (laughs) Disagree. (laughs) But Jonas is the boss. And you know it. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But I'm not even happy about it because I have to tell you to do things or things don't get done sometimes. Well, right. I'm just living my best life. <laughs> yeah, it's a. Uh, well, when Michaela's sick, she's the boss of the house yeah. because then I have to take care of her. But Jonas definitely is not, or does not just. I'm not trying to say, you don't. You would not go just along with it. No, no. that's not Jonas. <laughs> but he it, would not let me be the boss, and he just goes no. But aren't you grateful because we're opposite. so productive when I like, like today, I'm like, hey, we got to do the podcast. We got to do this. We got to do this. Yeah, and but it, then. If it were up to you, so for everyone knows, Michaela took a two hour nap before we did this yeah, podcast. I was not feeling good. At, and it's like, what, it's like two o'clock right now. So she fell asleep at noon and I had to wake her up multiple times. I could have kept sleeping probably I know. another two hours. I know. That's when, if you were the boss of the house, we would just sleep all day and all night and then netflix in between <laughs> not good but i've been traveling a lot i i haven't watched when was the last time we watched netflix oh last night that's because we didn't go see a movie that so we night. just stayed home and watched a movie well besides that though you guys for like two weeks i haven't sat and watched netflix but i've also been busy and like working and traveling so that's true i've been productive and you've got your meats which have been super cool yep, we got one more Mm-hmm. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. That's our thoughts on honeymoon. It seems like we agreed for the most part. So let us know your thoughts in the yeah. comments below. Don't forget to leave a review if you're on Spotify or Apple. And we'll catch you every Friday as usual. If you haven't gone on a honeymoon, I definitely recommend it. It is the best. So the if you're best. planning a wedding, plan that honeymoon. Enjoy yourselves. Take the time for yourselves. I think it is super important, and I'm grateful that we did it. So anyway, once again, thanks for tuning in. We love you guys so much, and we'll catch you next Friday. See ya.